Hello friends, Jennifer Pearson here at Thistle Gypsy. So I had uh, done my root chakra reading and um, these are just things for me to play with here. <laughs> things I have been playing with as I think about the video. Um, my root chakra and said that you know there were some some things to do particularly some grounding that needed to be done um, to kind of help strengthen it and um, I actually did manage to finally get out to a local park and um, really spend some time in direct contact with the earth. It's the first down near water. It's beautiful, beautiful day. The temps, um, I'm in Alabama. Uh, I don't know if you'd call it north central, leaning toward northeast. Because you'd say northeast Alabama. And um, kind of surprisingly, <laughs> We've uh, ended up with uh, some milder temperatures. Um, <laughs> it probably wouldn't be mild to other people, but to us it was. So it was a beautiful um, evening to be out. I went out in the evening, and um, we still have only a sliver moon, but I was keeping in mind that there was also seemed to be something about getting out in the moon and I've received that in other kinds of readings as well and so I went out in the evening out by the lake shore and then up at a lodge which is up on a bluff so I was at the base of the lodge laying you know sitting out on the grass and as I was doing that I actually was um, exploring some cards that I had pulled for another reading and while I was doing that um, for some reason a rabbit came to me not a literal rabbit the rabbit that is I think of as um, being in my root chakra I actually have a number of spirit animals in my root chakra and so the rabbit was was just kind of showed up and was like you know I've got all of these channels already made for you down here <laughs> in other words you know it's the the you know rabbits live in warrens you know I also have uh, a badger in my um, in, in my solar plexus chakra, and so it was. I don't know. It just kind of did that, and and my response was, okay, I'll explore that later. Um, there were actually quite a people with quite a few people around me up on the balcony above me over in the pool area <laughs> so it was uh, it was not a private particularly my, my little spot was fairly private but it, it wasn't a private um, or quiet area sometimes it's very quiet but it's uh, people still enjoying summer like vacations even though school has started here some people have not gotten back into that swing yet and um, so this morning, and that and that time out there really did me a world of good. It's really interesting. I mean, I've got some joint pain and flexibility issues, so I was perfectly comfortable sitting there. I was sitting cross-legged, and then when I went to get up, it was like, oh dear, <laughs> you know. Um, but. You know, when I got up, I just felt more energized in general. So I really need to do that more often, whether it's on my own land. Um, and it's not, you know, I just, I shouldn't say land. It makes it sound like I have a lot of property. I have a third of an acre, and half of it is uh, really not very accessible to me. Um, but I have a lawn, you know. So on my property, um, I unfortunately it's it's not again it's not private but whatever. 
I, I need to stop using that as an excuse not to take the blanket out there and hang out on the lawn. Um, part of it is somewhat secluded, so... Um, So yes, I need to do that sort of grounding more regularly. I, I neglect that, and I think it's part of something of a larger pattern of, of neglect. And I think that other people, it might not seem like neglect, but I think it ends up being neglect for me because I am, in fact, challenged in terms of my health. And so I need to be fostering it um, more. And, of course, I'm used to doing it with the help of doctors and controlling diet and things like that. But I need to think in terms of these other ways of fostering it. Um, and so this morning, uh, well, no, I had been up. I was already, I had been up, I did all of my stuff for my animals, I think I had sat down and was going to maybe have finished some other exploration I was doing, it's a Sunday when I'm recording this, and then, um, and I felt, uh, I don't know, I felt a pull to lay down and and relax and so I did and I thought okay well this is a good time to explore um, the idea of bringing earth energy or bringing energy up through my chakra through the rabbit channels <laughs> through the rabbit warren or whatever um, and I think I had even gotten this when I was up you know, when I was on that bluff below the below the lodge, um, the, the lodge was directly behind me. But I, I think at that time I got this sense of, um, you know, I might have thought, oh, well, this is so great, you know, I, you know, I'm having all of this root chakra time, <laughs> I'm having all of this grounding time. Again, it was such a lovely evening. I was out there between the two places, I think, for two hours. And um, and I think I, I sort of was, you know, tentatively reaching down, you know, can I feel down into the center of the earth or down in there? And I had this sense, actually, of magma or lava. <laughs> and, and that was, and then the rabbit, you know, kind of saying, well, you know, I've got these channels already made for you that you could, and, and I was like, okay, well, this is, I think this is not something I'm going to do now. I'll come back to it. And so, as I was relaxing this morning, I thought, okay, we'll, we'll do this thing, you know. So I relaxed into it and uh, thought about, you know, pulling, you know, my <laughs> thinking was to pull lava up. And then, so I started to do that, and then it just seems like too much or wrong. I thought, you know, and I know that it's not literally hot, you know, I'm not going to have a sensation of heat. Um, but something was just like, no, this is, it's too, it's, this substance is too hot. It's, you know, maybe I was even thinking that it's, too thick. Something about it made me uneasy. Um, and there was another aspect was that when I started to imagine bringing that lava up, it was um, it was not slow and quiet. It was bubbly and um, I don't know what else to word, word to use other than um, angry. There was an angry feeling to it, or turbulent. It was turbulent and kind of shooting up and feeling forceful. And so I thought, you know, I started to bring it up through the root and the sacral, and it just, 
it just felt too too much. I didn't want to go any further up. This isn't this is somehow not right. So I cleared it back out and but I was feeling like I was connecting with this whole idea of there being um you know again there being these not only the idea of just drawing up like a line through the chakras um but like circular three-dimensional channels um available and I thought, you know what, this was, this was too much, you know, that's too hot. And I said, maybe I just need to, the idea just came up to me to bring water up. I thought, you know, maybe be water warmed by that lava or something. But So I let go of that and I started to draw up water. And that, it, first of all, you know, there was a sense of it being right. There was a sense of it, yes, it's like, Yes, let's cleanse, use this as a kind of cleansing of the chakras. Let's do it. <laughs> you know. And so the water kind of came up and it it's like it made me and now I know that there is, you know, we think of the individual chakra centers, you know, and I know that there are other patterns, you know, in Reiki and acupuncture and stuff you know the energy mapping of the body etc that there are other channels but I'm I'm still at a pretty simplistic stage right so I'm thinking of just this line well and again when when it came up when the water came up came up for the for the through the first three chakras easily and came up to the heart and the heart was kind of like a pool, so it's like coming up to the pool. These days I seem to be seeing the heart chakra as a as a green pool. And then it was being uh, drawn up and came to my throat chakra. And it was interesting. Um, it's interesting to me how what works for one sort of doesn't work for another. So came up to the throat chakra and it wanted to be a waterfall. So it wanted to be a waterfall. It wanted to release there somehow. And so I just thought, oh, we're going to have waterfalls. Cool. So we go up. And then I'm like, well, are we going to have like a series of waterfalls? Am I going to get a waterfall out of my third eye and out of my um, my crown chakra as well? And But what happened is that it went up and no, no to the to the third eye, to the brow chakra, no to that. But there was a sense of, and I didn't know if it would even go further into the other chakras upward. And I didn't know, you know, usually my crown chakra, the animal there, um, the totem animal for me there is um, a mountain goat. And so I thought, well, is this a cold area? Should it be, is it icy? And, if, you know, and so I was, I feel like my imagination was blocked on how the water was going to release, but it was supposed to release there. And, and there was an interesting, another interesting aspect was it was almost as though it was wanting to avoid the brow chakra and so I became aware that there's a, what I call now, a back channel. In other words, not straight up, but back along the spine and up and then releasing. So it's like it released, the water just released up at the crown chakra and would come down back through, almost into, into the brow chakra and then down and again back out the throat chakra and just the waterfall going into the pool of the um, of the heart chakra and then uh, the whole notion or knowledge that there is this other thing that comes up the spine was I thought oh all right so we've got 
like areas to explore here, but I didn't I didn't end up going very far with that. I don't know why. Maybe I just thought I was maybe trying to do too much in one session. So again, it was just sort of noted for future information. And so I just let that water flow for a little bit. And um you know, and then just come up and release back down and call it done. And can't remember if I actually slept a little bit after that. I can't remember or if this the next thing happened immediately. But at some point I start I I tried again with the lava. I said, okay. So I need to not think that what I'm drawing up has to do the same, has to necessarily come up through all of the chakras, has to behave, the energy has to behave in the same way at each chakra. I can be a little bit more selective or intuitive about it. And so I, so I thought, you know, I kind of, connected with the whole lava energy again and, and I did feel like it could come up safely to the root chakra without any harm done and so um, I went ahead and brought it up there and this time it was not tumultuous it was not angry or bursting um, which I think often happens even with um, power animals that the first time they come to you, they seem aggressive. Um, I know that when um, I kind of, and I think this was a reconnection, kind of reclaimed the, the horse spirit animal. I felt connected to horses since I, since I was very young. And um, it, was, it was angry. When I first, that dragon that I've spoken about uh, in the other video, my chakra trials video, that dragon, when it first came to me, was very fierce, very, um, and I didn't know if it was fierce protective or, or what. It was, it was weird. It was agitated. <laughs> it was, it was, in, in many ways, it was not particularly welcome. <laughs> um, it was not what, and it was not what I was expecting. I was, I was driving along. I'll give the very brief story. I was driving along. Um, a highway, and it was a you know a, a three-hour trip I was on toward the beginning of it, and I happened to just happened to be crossing a bridge and wasn't thinking anything of that. There are several um, causeway-type bridges um, that I cross for this trip, and and I was just thinking, you know, I should see while I'm here if I can. I must have been thinking about my health, and I was thinking about the role of inflammation. And I thought, you know, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna see. I'm gonna just ask what um, power animal would be interested in helping me with inflammation. You know, so I would have expected something cooling or calming, um, a sea creature. And in a sense, this it is a sea creature that showed up, but so or a water creature. So we we generally associate dragons with fire, but I will I will mention something here in a minute. So up pops this dragon, instantaneous. There's a dragon, an agitated dragon, looking to the left, looking to the right, like it's looking for something to kill, you know, um, or you know wanting to maybe defend. It wasn't really paying particular attention to me, but it was very agitated. And and I'm like, oh, you know, previous to that, I really had thought I was kind of anti-fantasy <laughs> anti power animal. I thought we have so such a rich, you know, biodiversity. Not as much as we did have with all the extinctions, but we still have rich biodiversity. Why do we need fantasy power animals. Well, boom, I have a fantasy power animal. So, and it showed up, and it showed up so strongly, I, I was not going to reject it, but I wasn't going to engage it either because it seemed very aggressive. So it was like, okay, you're here. <laughs> 
that's that. So when I mention this, as I often talk about in my um, in my videos when I'm talking about this sort of thing, is I did have a conversation with my sister um, and mentioned the arrival of the crazy dragon. And I, you know, I think I was explaining to her, I said, you know, it's not, it's like a Chinese dragon. It's not a winged dragon. Um, it may have wings, but that's not a main feature. It's more serpent-like um, and does a lot of coiling. Um, and, you know, you could say it's Kundalini, you know, I don't know. But it's a dragon to me, at any rate. So, so the dragon showed up, and again, it was... This was an example of, again, something that was very fearsome or aggressive seeming when it first showed up. So that lava, although I don't think of the lava as a power animal, but the lava was initially very tumultuous um, and seemed angry. But when I, after I did the water thing and then I went back and I, and I was conscious that I was going to do it in a limited fashion, I was going to draw it up in a limited fashion just to the root chakra and no further, um, it was much um, calmer, you know, you know, it wasn't like I was dealing with an erupting volcano. <laughs> it was more like I was drawing up from a, a lava pool or something in the center of the earth or something like that. I didn't feel like I was reaching far. I felt like it was just there and I could just pull it up. And so I did pull it up and what happened, and I think again this became, I became open to this idea through the water and the waterfall, is that as the, the lava came up, it actually spilled out and was covering my legs. And so it did that for a while. It just came up, spilled out, kind of heavily the way they do. I didn't feel heavy, but just yeah, that was my awareness is that it was heavy going down my legs. And I was laying down at this time, but going down my legs and covering my legs. And then essentially going back into the earth. It's not like my legs ended up encased or anything. It was just flowing down. And I thought, okay, well, well, that's interesting, <laughs> which is pretty much my response to every, everything. It's like, okay, that's interesting. And uh, then I let it, I let it go. I, I just let it happen, and then I I let that end. I let it end. It seemed natural. It didn't seem like it was intending to be long. I let it. I let it end, and then um, I've been feeling uh, like for protection, protection purposes, because I'm aware that I've been fairly vulnerable to infection, etc. And so I, I also, after that, all of that, I went through kind of a, a, a chakra ceiling. I went through each one and did what I thought of as kind of a, a ceiling to seal them. And one of them resisted, and now I can't remember which one it was. It's like, I don't want to be still. I need to stay open. And I can't, I don't know if it was, it was either the heart or the throat, I think. Anyway, so that was interesting too, and I, w I wasn't going to fight with that. It's like, well, okay. Um, so there, so there you go. I feel like I'm making some progress with drawing things. <laughs> Normally when when they say drawing energy up through your chakras, and they often say imagine a light, 
And so I just sort of automatically imagine light, or they say go to the center of the earth and draw up energy. And I guess my immediate association is that that energy is going to be light. Um, and people will often refer to it as kind of lighting up your chakras or ener energizing your chakras or whatever. And so I think of it kind of like electricity. And, and so this was my first experience of thinking of it not, of drawing something that wasn't light or wasn't um, you know, quote unquote energy but was more material in nature like the water or the um, or the lava so, so there you go just to share. Um, so it's, you know, I did what, part of what I was, I felt like I was being called to do in my, um, in my reading, my root chakra reading, and it led to that, that rabbit moment, <laughs> that rabbit moment saying, hey, we've got some channels for you here. You could, you could draw things up through our, the warren, etc. Like, okay, and then I, I did that. And later in the day, I did in fact feel um, this, this day, I definitely felt like my legs were stronger than they have been in quite a while. Now, whether it will last, I don't know. Um, but it was, it was very welcome, very welcome. Um, and so I did yard work. And that's part of the reason I'm not on camera right now is because I've... <laughs> I just took a shower after my yard work. And uh, I got out the Animal Speak book here because um, I, this afternoon when I went out to, to go get gas for the lawnmower, um, there was a lizard on my porch. And I don't think I've seen a lizard all year which is actually kind of unusual because um, skinks, I think they're, I think that's what they are, blue-tailed, blue-tailed skinks, um, are quite common around here. Um, there are some, some summers I see them quite frequently. They live under my, um, or around my porch or by the steps. But I saw, I don't usually see one actually on the porch, and so there was one on the porch, and I thought, you know what, this is so unusual that I'm going to go ahead and look it up in the animal speak. And interestingly enough, one of the things it talks about here, you know, I do associate them with dream time from the medicine cards, um, and certainly what I'd been doing earlier that day is appropriate for that, you know, the, the medicine cards uh, passage about the, the lizard. But in this, it talks a lot about chakra and chakra work, working on your chakras, energizing your chakras. And I thought, oh... That's why lizard showed up. It's not like a new message so much as a confirmation. <laughs> it wasn't telling me anything new. It was confirming that yes, this you're on the right track. It's one of those one of those kinds of messages. Make the most of this time. This is exactly what you should be doing. So and I I just thought I'm doing a video. I'll pull a card, and I haven't done very much with my nature's whispers, and I love my nature's whispers. Just the artwork, Josephine Wall's artwork. So, here we go. Let's just do it. No more shuffling. Um, and it is getting on toward autumn. It's not quite this far along, but there is a feel... The grass, thank heavens, has stopped growing. <laughs> it was still pretty thick out there today, but it has stopped growing. And here we have the root chakra energy. So 
you know, that reds, that red, orange, the butterflies, they're really orange, so maybe more sacral chakra. But transformation. Transformation. But I always get the feeling that a goodbye to this. There's always, there's a melancholy to me to this card. There's a melancholy. But I will also, because I have taken all of these, um, well, for goodness sake. Well, we'll keep that. It flipped out anyway. You are worth it. Of course I'm worth it. We'll take this one too. Assurance, which is funny because I was just talking about how the, um, the lizard was kind of an assurance. But let me pick one more. Which one is seeming? Lots of them. Cosmic to me. I'm going to go with this one. How funny. Potential gateway. Potential gateway. Well, I'll have to contemplate that separately, how that relates to the actual card. And it certainly relates to the experience I've just been talking about. Just the whole rabbit thing, <laughs> you know? Hey, there's a way here. We've, we've had this gateway ready for you here for some time now. Um, but I'll look at it in terms of the card. If... You know, that face coming out of the tree is the opening of a gateway. I'll have to take some time and sink into the card and look at the figures at the bottom down there. But it's been 30 minutes of rambling and chakra talk and so it's time to go um, put my laundry in the dryer <laughs> and get on with my evening here so I hope this um, helps anybody who is maybe having trouble with this idea of drawing up energy who also is maybe having health challenges and um, you know, to see other ways to relate to your chakras and draw energy, etc. I think for a normal healthy person, the, the normal, <laughs> what I think of as the normal way, is probably fine. But I think when you get in a depleted or problematic health state like I've been in, or that you're a newbie, uh, you know, you're... You know, we don't have Reiki masters really available here in the middle of nowhere, at, you know, Alabama, that I'm in a position, um, and I don't have money to pay somebody. So I'm in a position of having to work through it uh, on my own. And so these are my experiences in being kind of my own healer, just taking the guidance as it comes to me. All right, everybody, take care. Bye-bye.